I tell you what we're not laughing about, and that is the final item of the show. Some of you may have started watching what I'm told is a really good documentary series called Mr. Bates versus the Post Office. This is about probably the greatest miscarriage of justice ever seen in UK history. That's how some people have described it, where for some 16 years, the Post Office relentlessly pursued branch owners, operators across the country for theft, fraud, false accounting, despite knowing that actually there were problems in their own system. Truly unbelievable. 700 prosecutions, people lost their homes, lost their life savings, went to prison, and tragically, some have already passed away, and some committed suicide. Well, joining me now is the former postmaster, post office scandal victim himself, uh, Christopher Head, who I think was the youngest postmaster back in 2006. Christopher, thank you for joining me on the show. Uh, just give us a sense, Christopher, of of your experience. What what was your story and, and, and where you think the situation's now and what should happen now? Yeah, I mean, I, I, hi, Richard. I ran the brand from 2006 um, up until 2015. And over the years, we had, you know, what we, we call the minor discrepancies, but no hundreds of pounds missing every month. And in 2014, uh, I had a lot of problems with the Horizon system where it would um, it would freeze. It, we, we're getting messages on the screen saying the data was corrupt and all of these things. And there was a shortfall of 40 odd thousand pounds, which uh, a few weeks later doubled to over 80,000 pounds. And um, wow. that led to that led to suspension and, and to termination. And uh, post office originally went down the um, criminal prosecution route. Um, about six months later, they said to me that they were dropping all charges, but they wouldn't give a reason why. And then they said that under the terms of the contract, we still want our money back. So we're going to start civil proceedings against you. So that's, um, you know, that. And what year was that? So there. they were pursuing civil proceedings. What year was that, Christopher? That was 2015. And 15. When the truth is, we know actually that they had, it turns out they had, they, they knew internally that they had serious problems and that they were still pursuing people. What's your feeling towards the, the people at the top of the post office at the time, including uh, the then uh, boss of the post office, uh, Paula Venos, who, um, uh, who was then awarded, Paula Venos, sorry, uh, at, um, there's a picture of her there, uh, who was uh, then awarded a CBE in 2019. Well, I, I think, you know, like we've said is that we need to know who, who exactly knew what and when, you know, what was being communicated because, you know, she, she, she turned up to the select committee, as we saw in the in the Mr. Bates uh, drama. And, you know, she, she was basically saying that she was not aware of any problem. She was asking, you know, are we aware of any remote access? I need to be able to say no. Well, you know, you, you don't say I need to say no. You say, you know, what is the truth? And we're sitting here now and she's got them ser uh, the CBE for services to the post office. But look at the state of what, what the network is now, you know, uh, the PPP people have lives Absolutely. have been devastated. Um, and I think there's a petition that has uh, has gone pretty viral, actually, for her to be stripped of her CBE, which has got some 150,000 signatures on it. Um, quite extraordinary. Uh, Christopher, thank you so much indeed for your thoughts on that. Just finally, Christopher, uh, Sir Ed Davey was the post office minister. He declined a meeting with the campaign and Mr. Bates, who's part of this, uh, still part of this uh, documentary. Uh, what do you yeah. think Sir Ed Davey should do? I mean, he, he's he's partly culpable here, isn't he? Uh, well, I, I think, look, when, when, when you go to a minister and he's turned around saying that he was misled by post office officials, even if it's an arm's length body, you know, you, you don't just take that word for it. You say, well, I want to find out for myself. And therefore you have to dig deep and you say, well, you I want to see the, hear the other side of the story. Why didn't he meet Alan? Find out Absolutely what right. Christopher, thank you so much yeah. indeed for your thoughts. While well, we approach the Lib Dems for a comment. And uh, they said that uh, Sir Ed Davey bitterly regrets that the post office were not honest with him at the time. His heart goes out to the families caught up in this miscarriage of justice. And he'll fully cooperate with any inquiry to get to the bottom of what went wrong. I think I may need, uh, I may have a statement from, uh, from the Cabinet Office as well on behalf of Paula Venels, which is here, which says it would be inappropriate to comment on any individual honours recipient. Well, I tell you what, 150,000 people are giving their comment. That is for sure. I just think this is, uh, it's another shocking story. It's just outrageous. And once again, we've got 
We've got the lack of accountability. She left the post office in 2019. They knew all about this scandal. She'd been paid almost four million quid over six or seven years. She's awarded the CBE. Where's the accountability? As I said earlier, fine, if you want to be paid the big bucks, then you've got to actually suffer the responsibility and the accountability.